Early any weekday morning, while the postman and the milkman are delivering the letters and the milk, you will see people going to work. This is Jack Ellis. He's a bricklayer. Jack goes from one building site to another, so he usually has to go some distance to work. His work starts at 8 in the morning. He's helping to complete this big new block of flats, part of a municipal building scheme. There are a number of different trades in building, plasterers, painters, carpenters, scaffolders and labourers. The block he's working on has reached the third floor so he goes up onto the scaffolding to get to his job. He carries his plumb rule and level in his hand and his tools in his bag. Let's see what they are. A club hammer and a brick hammer. A chisel and a bolster or broad chisel. He uses all these for cutting bricks. And his line and pins. But his trowel is in his hand most of his working life. This is a fairly new one and Jack shaves it down so that it's perfectly comfortable. In the meantime, mortar is being mixed and the builder's labourer collects it to take to Jack. The men work together as a team to get the job done efficiently. Here come the bricks he will need. They go up on a hoist to the floor where Jack is working. Labourers take them to him and the other bricklayers so that they're never short of materials. Bricks must be well and truly laid, and a course of bricks must run straight. The corners or coins are built up. He sticks in a pin and runs out his coursing line of hemp and string to the next coin. This gives him the level for his course of bricks. When they're working on a double wall, Jack lays the outer wall while another bricklayer builds the inside one. They spread the mortar so that it comes to the right thickness. He puts a little mortar on the end. Then he lays it, keeping it level with his line. Every now and then he checks the straightness of his wall with his plumb level, which contains a spirit level. During the course of the day, the foreman bricklayer usually comes along to explain any special points. There is a window in Jack's work and the foreman measures it up so that Jack can arrange his brickwork to fit the window without spoiling the pattern. Every brick laid and every job done by the other workers is planned to turn the architect's design into a building. Detailed plans are prepared, for houses must be constructed carefully and accurately. The architect and the general foreman discuss the job and then the foreman bricklayer has to work out the details so that the floors, the stairs and the doors come in the right places. There are circular windows in this building and the foreman bricklayer has to get a skilled man to do the job. When Jack has finished the wall, the foreman puts him on this job. The 
the bricks must be shaped to fit the window. So Jack marks them with a pencil and cuts them with his bolster and club hammer. Every brick will have to be cut to shape, for bricklaying is an accurate job. Bricks are laid to a definite pattern, and this is called English bond. One course is all headers and the next all stretchers. Stretcher, stretcher, header, header, header. Then there is stretcher bond for thin partitions where the wall is only one brick thick. Only stretchers are used. Stretcher, 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 stretcher. This is Flemish bond, and it's made by having alternate headers and stretchers in each course. Header, stretcher, header, stretcher, header, stretcher. Notice how these headers are in perfect line from top to bottom of the house, however high the house may be. Jack uses the best bricks on the facing or outside walls, but the inside wall can be made from cheaper bricks and half bricks. It needs to be strong, not beautiful, for it will be covered with plaster. It's just as carefully laid and the bricklayer checks up to make sure the wall is perfectly upright. During the morning and afternoon, there's a break for tea. Nowadays, if the site is big enough, there is usually a proper canteen where the men can get meals and tea and sandwiches. Sitting with Jack are two apprentice bricklayers. They are allotted by the foreman bricklayer to the various jobs so that they can learn the trade properly. They've been put onto the inside wall with Jack Ellis. Every now and then he checks up to see how they're doing. To complete their training, they get time off every week to go to classes or the trade school and learn the theory of their job. of building depends on the weather. When it's raining, the bricklayers can't work, but they have a guaranteed 32-hour week, so they always get paid, even when they can't work. The foreman bricklayer finds jobs under cover for as many of them as possible. He sets Jack to work in the hall, bricking up under the stairs. As the walls go up, the rest of the work should keep pace with them. The scaffolders erect scaffolding so that it's ready when it's wanted. When the walls are finished, Jack can go back and take out bricks which have been temporarily laid in sand so that holes are already there into which the pipes and ventilators will be put. All he has to do is to take out the bricks, make a few chips with his chisel, and in goes the ventilator. Every week on Friday, the pay is brought to the site, and all the workers collect their money. This week, Jack's earned seven pounds, five shillings. 
His basic wage is about six pounds. The rest is bonus for the number of bricks he's laid. Most weeks he gets between seven and nine pounds. Like most people, he goes out shopping with his family on Saturday afternoon. If you meet him in the street, you won't be able to tell him from anyone else, except that he's rather fitter than most because he works in the open so much. And he's got the satisfaction of knowing that he's doing a rarely skilled and useful job of work.